Well, Jim, it's time to wake up because we started the AEW roster review on part one. Oh, well, we started boy. part one, I should say, on the Jim Cornette experience. We have part two here today. Again, we're just looking at the male roster for now. Any thoughts after the first part, which was much longer than I anticipated going into it? Well, we we thought the original premise of this was, okay, now with all that's happened lately, let's see if AEW can field a decent team. What What would their roster look like if you got rid of all the dreck, separated the wheat from the chaff or the chumps, as the case may be? And we, by the time we got to the M's, because their roster is listed in alphabetical order, by the time we got to the M's, we were 70-something names in. So we, we, we said, well, we'll do part two on the drive through So I want to bring people up to date because I've recopied my notes just where we are at this point. Obviously, the people we were going to keep I'll rattle them off real quickly. MJF, the best promo. But when you wrestling. say we, it's you. You had your picks. Well, I had my picks, but you should agree with me. I get, well, okay, these are my picks then. You're not endorsing my picks? Well, you had a few I wouldn't endorse, and there's a few I would have done differently. Well, I'll go down through here then, and you argue with me if you want to. But Take your pick. The shovel is my pick. MJF. The best promo in the business today. Brian Danielson, the best in-ring performer, I think, wrestler who can do the modern style and not make it silly, phony, choreographed, whatever. When he wants to be. When he when he wants to, he can do the other stuff too, but when he wants to be, and when he was on the right track last year. FTR, Dax and Cash, the best tag team in wrestling. CM Punk, the biggest box office attraction they have in the company. And then there's going to be a couple here that there's an asterisk, and I noted LL beside their names, which would be contingent on whether they could listen and learn. Because some people may have names and raw talent, but apply them in horrible ways and need to be redirected. And John Moxley's one of those. Then we're also keeping Wardlow. We're keeping Miro, if he would listen and learn. Jay Lethal, the acclaimed, both of them. Austin and Colton Gunn. Claudio Castagnoli. Christian Cage, who, if he can overcome this injury, can still have excellent matches, and you need some guys from that that's he's of the last generation that can still go in the ring and has the experience and the knowledge and can teach, but is kind of modern. You see, he's walking that line there. Billy Gunn, who is more over now than he was 20 years ago, and obviously will transition at some point over the next year or two into a coaching situation, but I would keep him on the roster. Darby Allen, again, listen and learn as long as we could keep him from killing himself for free with six or eight of his friends over at the park. Kyle O'Reilly. Keith Lee, if he could listen and learn and potentially not speak like a goddamn librarian. Mark Quinn, under the listen and learn uh, banner of what a great natural athlete and could he be focused properly without distractions of cheerleaders and trampoline self-trained individuals around hook and some people are oh hook well hook already with the limited exposure he's had the people like him and yes that's somewhat of a fad they decided they're going to get together and like the, the kid with the weird hair and they like taz but every time he gets in the ring he has a completely different state he's a lot like kyle o'reilly completely different style and uses his strong points at judo throws and things in his favor. And I think he's got a nice future. And the same we said for Nick Comorato, who without solo and a go-go and cutie, looks like a jacked up Pampiro Furpo, and you could do something with that guy. He's a gimmick waiting to happen. 
and 2.0 under the Listen and Learn banner because they're at least big mouths and have some personality, but they've been, unfortunately, uh, they they have the Jericho stench of bad flunky group in them. And I'm going to add one more because I was mis I was thinking of another person when you mentioned this guy's name, and some people on Twitter were like, how can you say that? Remember Buddy, good old Buddy? Buddy Murphy, yeah. I said, fuck, buddy. Well, no, buddy I was Matthews. thinking. Buddy Matthews. Buddy Matthews. I don't even know. Are there two buddies, or was he a buddy in WWE, and now he's a buddy here? What is he now? He is now Buddy Matthews. He used to be Buddy Murphy, and then they made him just Murphy. Okay, but that's right. Well, whatever the fuck. And Buddy sucks, too, except if you're Buddy Landell or Buddy Rogers. But he looks like a good athlete. I'm going to put him in the keep column under the because I don't know anything about him under the listen and learn category. And then there was a few more that I was on. The, I put a fence category in where you were trying to fucking argue with me about a couple of these people and or a couple we didn't exactly know. Brody King, possibly somehow something, just the House of Black ruined everybody in that thing for me. Dante Martin, we've got the incredibly na unnatural natural athlete in Mark Quinn. Dante is known for his leaping also, but also for his moop face and lack of any personality. So if you got two guys that you're trying to concentrate on that, that both their calling card is the same thing in this case, giant leaping ability and athleticism, then go with the one that has most personality. So we got Mark Quinn. Eddie Kingston, who we liked at a, at a point, but it, he's not really try, either trying to grow. He didn't have any help on the promotional push, and he apparently hates everybody in the locker room and or they him, and they got enough of that going on, so we were up in the air about that. Adam Cole, wh which one would you get? Would you get the guy that halfway looked like a smaller, well-conditioned athlete that was the star of NXT, or would you get emaciated Adam Cole that looks like he's 120 pounds, hadn't seen the sun in fucking I months? Wouldn't and, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. You know, goddamn, it, it just fell apart in every way. Um, Same thing, Lance Archer. Big guy. Impressive shit. You know, but... He's been there, then he's not, then he's a heel, and he's a baby face, he's with Jake, blah, 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 just, it's, yeah. I've reconsidered another one. Brian Pillman Jr., actually, as I looked at a comprehensive list of who I was keeping, it's not because of the guy or the talent that he has, it's just they've just botched it so bad. How many rehab projects can you keep on a roster if you're trying to run a business? which is why we were trying to look at it. How would we run a business? Everybody be able to contribute. No fucking self-trained assholes or, you know, the indie idiocy. And, you know, there's only a few people that you can keep and try to rehab for the future. It may be past Brian's time. I don't know. And I'm on the fence about Andre Olio Leo because I said I'd keep him since you said he could work. If only if he had Alex Abrahantes as his um, impersonator, his, inter his interrogator. I didn't what say that at all. You said that. No, you said he could work. I said he could work, and then you. S I didn't say as long as he has Alex. And you said no, that. you said he could work, and I said as long as he could have Alex. I, but I'm on. I'm still on the fence. Um, there are three people that I've moved into a coach's roster because at this point. Christopher Daniels, Dustin Rhodes, and Frankie Kazarian. And remember, I said Frankie can still work, and I would use him to put over some of the, because he's a great baby face, some of the upper echelon heels on the way up. Dustin's already talking about retiring. Chris Daniels is older than he looks and is in great shape. But And if, you can get, if, if I could determine whether Chris has totally fallen in the camp of the Cucamonga kids, and is a buckaroo, or if he's still serious about the wrestling business. And we're going to toss some people. Anthony Agogo. I'm sorry, but he's gone, gone, because it's been years, and we've seen nothing at this point. Griff Garrison. 
same thing. Brock Anderson, I was willing to give him a chance about a year and a half ago when they showed us what he looked like three or four times and I haven't seen him since. I assume if anything was going to happen there, it would have happened. Lee Johnson and Lee Moriarty. Because if you can't remember which one's which and what who does what, that's a sign there. Matt Seidel, lovely young man. He came in, got beat several times, hadn't been seen in a long time. Why fuck break that string? Jake Hager. Tell me the first fucking thing that he has contributed to a match or an interview or a an incident for that matter. Matt and Jeff Hardy, as bad as I hate to say it, Jeff probably doesn't need to get back into the business for the next year or two to uh, protect or enhance his chances of coming out of the rehab successfully and et cetera, and with his physical condition and his age, and Matt, because of his physical condition and his age, and they've given him brain damage and bashed his face in already, and he's had 10 different gimmicks, half of them heels, half of them baby faces. Nobody's been able to keep track of what the fuck. They have completely made the Hardy Boys, who, what, two years ago, not even. We said, well, like, this could still be the hottest tag team reunion they could put together. And now it's like, if they ever come back, who gives a shit? That's the Booker of the Year. John Silver, because he's comedy, if he'd ever showed that that uh, he could get out of that, I mean, just silly comedy, goofy comedy, not even comedy comedy. And uh, Ethan Page and Brian Cage, who I both think are fucking goofs, and this modern, you know, high school drama class style of wrestler. Alex Reynolds, unless he comes up with another formula for aluminum foil. Malachi Black, who doesn't want to be there to begin with, so he should enjoy any help he, he can get to get out of there. And our friend Daniel Garcia. That's in the toss column. Because again, yeah, I'm sure he's a fine little athlete. And if we hadn't seen so much of him, he might be one of those guys you'd pick as a project for a couple of years. But right now, Jesus H. Christ, there's a hundred other guys on e in every indie that you could probably get to make that contribution. Now, here is a separate column, Brian, of people that <laughs> not only would I not keep them on my roster if I was running a wrestling company, but I want you to, as I mention each one of these names, try to offer an explanation as to why they would be under contract. I'm not even talking about being paid per night or book him whenever they need him every once in a while. I'm talking about under contract. These people apparently have been drawing a salary, right? Angelico. I don't know why he's currently under contract because I don't remember him on TV in a long time. Jack Evans was released already, or they let his contract expire already, I should specify. Maybe they're just waiting for his contract to run out. Brandon Cutlet. He's friends with the Young Bucks. He does the filming of their YouTube show when it's active. And he also, every now and then, has wrestled, and he's a part of their on-screen comedy troupe. And when he wrestles, he's a joke. Right, he's not and good at he's it. he's part of their on-screen comedy troupe, he's a joke. Right. And this guy's getting paid to hold a video camera and shoot the fucking Hardly Boys YouTube show. Pizzeria Uno of the Dork Order. A pleather-clad potato with arms and legs. Well, remember, the Dark Order was an idea the Young Bucks originally had a lot of big plans for. It was their idea to do that beat-down angle that ended up being one of the most disastrous moments in Dynamite history, causing Tony Khan to take the reins, it's been said. He's a Young Bucks friend. They enjoyed working with his indie stuff on the indies. <clears throat> and the Dark Order is just wasting TV time in any way that they're used at this point. Fago Del Solo. 
there's no justification for him being under contract. You might argue with I mean, look, you might not. Well, see, that's, okay. where, that's where I'll hear from someone else like, oh, he's a really nice guy. That's the problem. <laughs> yes. There's a lot of people there who everyone will say, oh, he's a really nice guy. How could you say these things? Because there are certain wrestlers that shouldn't be under contract. There are nice people sleeping under bridges that also would be approximately as good or as valuable a contribution as a professional wrestler on the roster as Fago Del Solo. Even if you're a billionaire, you need fiscal restraint when it comes to all these contracts, especially when it, uh, I don't know why he's under contract. I'll just leave it at that. All right. You might argue with me on this with Dan Housen. Dan Housen. And I'm not going to argue with the kids on Twitter. Like him. that's right. Tony, whatever you want to say for good and for bad, Tony really listens to wrestling, Twitter, wrestling message boards. And Danhausen became a thing. Look, we played him a lot on the show. We're partly responsible if we're going to be honest. But we didn't we didn't play his wrestling nor sign him to a contract to wrestle. But you see the thing is, even if AEW signed him to a contract, you didn't have to use him this way. There's a way, I know it sounds crazy, but there's a way to use a character like that in a serious wrestling show as long as you point out it's a character and then have something for them to do that has nothing to do with the wrestling. But, but that's not going to happen here because right. that would require, or in any case, because that would require Tony to see somebody and have an idea for them and make them the one thing that was a little wacky so it would get over before they get viral for three weeks on Twitter for flipping a pizza or jumping off the roof or putting a curse on somebody. And then he signs them for years at a time because they were popular on Twitter. Friends and Jelly. Jelly fell off of something. Everybody put it on Twitter and he got a fucking job for three years. Nobody'd pay this guy to set up chairs, much less wrestle. But anyway, nevertheless. Continuing. Explain why this would ever even happen. Pip Sabian. Fucking seriously. This guy has gotten paid not only for the rotten wrestling he did and his childlike size and demeanor killing everything he comes in contact with and his goofy girlfriend and when Miro was their bodyguard but then they paid him for a year and a half to wander around the world wearing a cardboard box on his head and he he looks more professional that way than he does when he gets in the ring to wrestle I can't justify Kip Sabian being under contract right now I'm sure early on they saw him as a star with, or a future potential star. Remember, when AEW first started, he was programmed with a lot of those young guys. A couple of them broke out. Sammy broke out. Kip Sabian didn't. Now, with that said, I wouldn't keep him under contract. If we're going with the idea, and we'll get to this probably next episode, that AEW is going to have a women's division, I would keep Penelope Ford. Oh, you would. And I wonder how much of that goes into the decision to keep Kip Sabian from AEW. She, she uh, to me, is very borderline to begin with. It's not like she's good enough to fucking justify bringing a, another fucking dead weight along. I agree that she how many, should... How many, how many people is this lifeboat seat? I agree that she shouldn't justify having a second party under contract just because he's in a relationship with her, and I'm not even saying that's the reason, but I can't think of another reason why Kip Sabian, at this point in time, after all these years, would still be under contract. Luther! Hey, you didn't watch Kip Sabian's match with pack at the pay-per-view pre-show a few matches ago or a few shows ago the crowd was dead they didn't even care about any well, of this yeah. and they don't luther i already explained that to you he's enough said yes he's friends with chris jericho that. chris jericho but soraya just did an interview i heard where she said i think it was her it was either she did an interview or jericho did an interview saying it but i think it was her saying that chris jericho was the one who pushed tony to hire me tony listens to chris jericho and it's usually not the Tony or AEW's benefit. Luther, I need to say no more. Luther, Jake Hager. I mean, look at how many people are Jericho hires that bring nothing. Well, yeah, but at least Jake Hager actually did something somewhere at some time. It just didn't have anything to yeah. do with wrestling. And the modern day Dick that. Hutton. The modern day Dick <laughs> Hutton. Name a worse world champion. <laughs> Seriously, he was world oh, champion. Boy, perfect. Uh and then Luther. But uh, Mark Sterling. Cut, ah, fucking hell. Michael, knock a knock a knock a knock it to fuck off. I mean, that's uh, he's not even as good as Cutlet. Here's the question. 
is his contract, he's on the wrestling roster page. I mean, that's what we're going off for this. But is his contract just to be Kenny's assistant and they, he also wrestles? Or is it a wrestler, a wrestling contract and then is he paid separately to be Kenny's assistant? Well, I'm sure they, they put him on a wrestling contract and pay him as a wrestler, even though he's not and he can't and he doesn't. And then they probably also, well, maybe Twinkle Toes kicks in something to, for him to do his stooge work, draw his bath and things, clip his toenails, whatever the case comes up. And then finally, on the joke list, Cole, uh, two of them, Cole Cabana. <sighs> Again, 15 years ago, he was hot on the indies, and now he's everybody's friend that never wrestled and collected a check for a long time and was at the center of a lot of controversy. And again, you're asking why. The reason why is Nick Jackson of the Young Bucks went to Tony when Tony was going to let his contract yes. expire and insisted on him being brought back. He may lay claim to being the biggest freeloader in wrestling history at this point. And finally on the list, our little dog pockets. And you can say ratings all you want, or you can say merchandise all you want, but anytime you got this fucking asshole on a program, your promotion is a joke. Because you can't just you can't just do one joke segment and it doesn't turn your whole show into a joke that this guy's featured. What are your thoughts? And I want to ask you a question later on after all this about merchandise, but my other argument would be, and I think I made this, even if you're a fan of Orange Cassidy, he's been on that TV show now over three years. Does he mean that much anymore? Look at what happens to the ratings when he's on. He doesn't pop the ratings anymore. It's the opposite. People tune out. That has to be paid attention to, despite how many shirts he may sell. <sighs> and real briefly, that's the last column, except for one last column of people that we're getting rid of. And I've made a special column for self-trained trampoline cowboys, obnoxious do-it-yourselfers, cheerleaders, gymnasts, and egomaniacs that drag every opponent down to their level, can't be serious about anything, and should be exiled to Douchebag Island. Are you ready for this list? Twinkle Toes, himself Kenny Olivier. The California Raisins, Buckaroos number one and two. Hangnail Page. We've seen enough of Penthouse and Felix. It's same thing every week for three years. Pack has proven himself incapable of figuring out how to have a match. Jungle Boy we've given up on because, my God, he's getting more boring. Dino Douche because until brain transplants become a thing, he's clueless. And finally on the list, Ku Jericho, the insurrectionist, so that we can get rid of the last bit of locker room poison and get everybody working together on the same page instead of prop one expired canned ham up so that's where we're at any thoughts on those i wouldn't bring omega back but it's not for the reasons you wouldn't i wouldn't bring if i'm looking at this like tony khan like i'm running the company i don't bring omega back because there are other problems with omega uh that may or may not emerge publicly and i think that would make me as the business owner want to get away because if he, if he does bring him back, he's just going to do those things again. And then he's going to be sitting there dealing with that again. People who are in a position they shouldn't be in behave in stupid ways because that's just who they are. And to be honest with you, too, if I'm at war with WWE, I know no one's going to agree with me on this. I would toss them Kenny Omega. Let that headache be in Paul of X ear. There you go. Let him deal with that. I don't want to deal with it. Um... I wouldn't just toss Chris Jericho. I would give him an opportunity. I would say, do you think you could try for six months or a year to come here and work, and we're not going to do any of your ideas? We're not going to beat you. We're not going to toss you out. You're Chris Jericho. But for one year, let us book you. Let us do something different with you. Let us try to make you serious. If you feel you could do that, we want you on the team. If you feel like you could only do your ideas, and you could only do the things you come up with, then maybe it's time to separate. That would be my attitude with Jericho. You're just cutting him. You're too dadgum reasonable. All right, I'll go for that too, but I don't know how to write that on my list. The Young Bucks, I agree with you about needing to clean out that locker room. 
the Young Bucks are great for Friends of the Young Bucks. And quite frankly, we've seen since they've been gone that there's been no tangible difference to AEW's business. They weren't television draws, and a lot of the big pay-per-views were CM Punk. Again, Paul Levesque wants the Young Bucks? Go deal with that. Go deal with Again, I also have the option of just throwing all these people at Ring of Honor. Because I own that, if I'm Tony Khan doing this. Luchasaurus? <clears throat> Did you cut Jungle Boy? Yes. Because I'm just tired of him just yeah, being no, no, I agree. boring. I, I Hang think dog. He's been there since the beginning. I think... this. See, this is... Even if you didn't hate these people or hate the way they work, this is right here the example of where you wish there was another place to send people. Because even if you were a fan of Orange Cassidy or a Jungle Boy, get them off TV for a while. And not just send them home and bring them back to do the same thing. Just go away for a long time. Somewhere else. Uh, the rest of your list I think I'm okay with. I'm, the keeps and the not keeps and maybe some differences, 